we bow down before you this day and we acknowledge that you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords yes. that you went ahead of us and are still going ahead of us to prepare a way for us to create miracles when it seems to be impossible you make it possible for us as you've parted the seas for your people you are parting oceans for us as we are traveling on this road of holiness to reach our purpose and destiny father thank you for giving us a word in the week we have said the tide has turned that we shall see your glory manifest the testimonies being birthed in this time that lies ahead where the world is saying we must expect a peak in this pandemic i'm speaking this morning and say your word says it shall not come to pass your blood is our protection a hedge of fire around us around us as individuals as a household of faith as a nation globally lord and you have said to me, we need to stand. We need to arise and to take our place and confess your word. To speak your word. Life over every circumstance. And we must come against fear. And this morning we come against fear. And we speak life. Lord, forgive us where we have allowed fear and complacency to rule in our lives. But we shall arise this morning as ambassadors of the Most High God. And we confess that we are the sons of our Heavenly Father that has given us the authority to create with our words a life reflecting heaven here on earth. We lay down this morning everything that is not of you. Our thought patterns, our emotions. Yes. And we shall not be driven by our emotions or by the things we see. But we shall align our lives in accordance to your word and the plans you have for us. We surrender every plan that is not of you. And we declare your plans to rule in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I know this day it's a day of transition. Time of, of challenges, of discomfort, not being in church like we used to. Two, three weeks ago, the Lord told me, and I, I shared with you, it is as if there's a new thing being done in our midst. Church will change and has changed forever. We cannot go back to the old ways. Things need to change. And the topic for this morning, as you would have seen, God's plan is the best plan. God's plan is the best plan. How often do we plan things and it never materializes? Sometimes we push our plans beyond God's permitted will. He must just catch up. And I want to read to you a long portion of scripture, but we all know it very well. And I shall catch up um, as I progress in this morning. In Judges 7, from verse 1. Then Zeribal, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early 
and encamp beside the well of Herod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hands. What a... The people that you have are too many. We think numbers are the most important thing. Because if I have the numbers, I'm guaranteed of my victory. Here God says to, to Gideon, your people are too many. Sometimes we think, God, if I have a lot of money, I can do a lot of things. If I have a lot of people, I can do a lot of things. These are a humanistic approach. And sometimes we are falling into the trap of the humanist, a humanistic approach. Our flesh, our soul is well. But, and, and we all know the story of Gideon and how the Lord said, how he must uh, uh, make the people less. There's a sifting process. I said, um, to give the millions into your hands. This is our claim glory. List is our claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. And during this past few months, we have tried everything. And nothing seems to work. We can make our own plans. And it won't work. Man's plans can never sustain his destiny. I must repeat that. You've missed that one. Man's plans can never sustain your destiny. It's only God's plan for my life that can sustain my future. We can make many plans. Even the best plans won't work if it's not blessed by God. Unless we try to take credit for what the Lord is doing in our lives. I prayed earlier when I said this pandemic shall not hit a climax as prophesied by man in August. Because that is man's idea. Projections. But it's time that we as the body of Christ start to speak. Speak life. And come against this fear that is generated. Just try to sneeze when you're standing in a queue. People will separate themselves from you. <laughs> At least then you are in front. <laughs> now therefore, proclaim in the hearing of the people saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let them turn and depart at once. For those who are fearful and afraid, sit and relax. We shall go on and conquer. <laughs> if you are afraid and fearful, go back and relax. We shall go on and conquer. I refuse to accept a complacency mentality where I become comfortable. People are fearful this day. We need to come against it in the name of Jesus. We need to speak life. So if they are fearful and are afraid, let them turn back and depart at once. Not tomorrow, at once. Many people don't want to go to work because of fear. They don't want to send their children to school because of fear. They don't want to come to church because of fear. Do not be afraid. 
and he departed at once, and 22,000 of the people returned. Remember, he had 32,000. 22,000 of the 32,000 went back home. I believe any person, his whole atmosphere, his whole emotional state will drop to the floor. If 22 of the 32,000 people turn around and leave. Can I imagine, I'm saying to you this morning, if you fear, go home. And I'm left with only a fifth. Sometimes we want to compromise for the sake of the numbers, the truth. So I don't want you to sit and feel convicted this morning because you are here. So relax. Others are listening, are tuned in, they are watching. I'm not speaking against anybody. I'm speaking against a situation that needs to be addressed. Unless we have a victor's mentality, we shall never have victory. We shall remain slaves forever. We shall remain victims forever. Our school children, their academic year is now running over into 2021. Some are excited, but I know this lockdown is now longer than the patience of the parents. <laughs> it's not easy for the parents to have the kids at home forever. They need to go to school. It's more expensive to keep them at home than to send them to school. Because I have raised, we have raised teenagers. And we had a lot of teenage boys in our house and I know it was cheaper for us when they sleep yeah. than when they are awake because when they are awake they want to eat and they want to eat until they go to bed and then they wake up in the middle of the night to eat as well right what's up <laughs> then it will be that of whom that I say, this one shall go with you, this, the same shall go with you, and whoever I say to you, this one shall go with you. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set apart for him by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on the knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people who got down on their knees to drink water, then the Lord said Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped like a dog, choose them. 32,000 men. 1%. 1 percent. 1 percent. Because 32,000, 10% is 3,200, and 1, 10 percent of that is, is 320, so it's even less than 1%. God says, take this, less than 1%, I shall give you the victory. So that no man can take the glory for what God is about to do. No man shall be able to take glory for what the Lord is about to do in our nation. No man shall be able to take glory for what he's about to do in our household. No man shall take credit for what the Lord is about to do in your own life. Miracles upon miracles. We are not led by the economical statistics. We are not led by the employment figure. We are led by the plan of God for my life. If God said it, it shall come to pass. Amen. But we need to go through a mindset shift. Change your mind. Romans says, renew your mind daily. It is interesting how your mind can attack you at your, be in your bedtime. Mm -hmm. When you switch the light off, suddenly your mind plays havoc with you. Fear, stress, 
anxiety manifests itself in the quietness of your night time. The time that you were supposed to sleep and to rest and to recuperate is now taken up by fear, concerns. I know we're all going through the same things. Some others on a greater extent, others on a lesser extent, not just in South Africa, but globally. We all are going through the same thing. God is busy setting up His people for victory. He's positioning His sons and daughters of God for victory, not for defeat. There comes a distinction between those who serve the Lord and those who don't serve the Lord. Come and read your Bibles. He says, there come a time that I shall make a differentiation between who serve the Lord and who don't serve the Lord. James 4, verse 13 to 17. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. When was our lockdown started? Uh, 26th of February, eh? March. March. 26th of March, I think. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Until the 21st of March, nothing was wrong. And suddenly, we've lost a lot of things. Suddenly. Last week, Sunday, we could still drive somewhere during that, and suddenly, we are all teenagers again, living under a curfew. We are grounded from nine o'clock, be home at nine. Even when I was in school, I could have been at home at 10. <laughs> we make plans for this and this and this and suddenly everything changes. For whereas you do not know tomorrow, for what is your life? It's an even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that, if the Lord permits. Lest us not boast in our arrogance of doing it ourselves. I can make many plans, but only God can bless what He has ordained for my life. Yes. And whatever God ordained for my life, no man can take it away. Yes. No circumstance can take it away. No pandemic can change my destiny. Because God has a plan and a purpose for my life. We might sit this morning and say, God, how will this come to pass? I do not know. You might not know, but my God knows. There's no plan B for my life in God's agenda. There's only one plan. And that plan shall come into fulfillment. Let us not live by fear. Because if you live by fear, you shall never go into the victory round. You shall not see how God shall hand over the Midianites to the sons of God if you are filled with fear. You shall be sent home to go and sit with the old people and just observe the glory of God. You might say to me, this is a tough word. It is tough times. For too long we have heard sermons that will just smooth out and soothe our ears. But it's time that we hear a word that shall challenge our comfort zones. That shall challenge us out of our mindset of I, can, I cannot do this. How many... I think one of the biggest wastes of money for this year was the buying of a diary. We are at the end of the seventh month. How many times have you used your diary? Some people can't even remember what is the date. Because of the lockdown. 
Is it now Sunday or is it now Monday? Which day is it now? How do you know it's Sunday morning? All the other mornings you will sleep late, but Sunday morning you feel guilty. <laughs> that is how you know it's Sunday. <laughs> you feel guilty for lying in bed. <laughs> we as Christians like to make our own plans. We want things to go our way. God's plans are not always guaranteeing us a smooth sailing. God's plan for my life is not always necessarily a straight line. I remember when S and I were at uh, um, Oral Roberts University in the States. And we were walking on the campus. And this campus grounds, the pathways, there's no straight pathway. All the pathways are... I'm meandering through the campus. And the idea there is, there's no straight line in my life or in your life. Sometimes our life turns a left turn. This sounds like the Daytona 500 and they make a left turn. And they keep on making left turns. If you keep on making left turns, you eventually go right. <laughs> Let us not be concerned when our roads are taking us seemingly in the wrong direction. But if we rely on the author and the perfecter of my destiny, he shall make sure I'm going in the right direction. If I want to drive to Cape Town from where we are now today in our house, I must first drive north before I can go south. Yeah. Because the connection to the south is in the north. So my mind says, if I leave my, exit my drive, I must immediately turn south. You cannot because there's no road that will take me south immediately. In our journey with life, we shall sometimes have to make a left turn. Where we think it must be a right turn. But we can only have peace in our plans if we have peace with God. We can only have peace with God if we pray. If we study His Word. If we fully rely on God's guidance for my life. I said to, to my children in the week, some people are battling with the zeros in their bank balances. <laughs> Praise God for the zero in your bank balance. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. We need six zeros for a million. If you only have one zero, it means you've got ten rand. We need six zeros for a million. So don't fight. Against the zeros in your bank balance. Just get the one in the right position. In front of the zero. Change your mindset. It's about the approach and the trust we have in God. When Jesus told his disciples. That he's going to die. And Peter stood up and says, surely I shall defend you. And even chopped off a guard's ear. When the guards wanted to arrest Jesus. And Jesus started a new ministry. Sticking the ear back ministries. <laughs> When the heat was on, Peter was intimidated by a young girl. He just chopped off a soldier's ear. But the young girl asked him, aren't you one of them? 
He says, no, I don't know. I don't know him. Three times he was asked. Three times he was denied. And then the cockerel crowed. And he renounced Jesus. This one here, this strong one. When Goliath saw David, he was not intimidated by David because he's a young boy. He had plans. He had plans to kill David. But David was never intimidated. He was never intimidated by the size of his opponent. Why? Because he was trained in isolation. When there was no fame and glory, they got trained. How to kill the jackal and, and the lion and the bear. And as he saw Goliath, he said to me, you uncircumcised Philistine. He didn't give him a name. He didn't acknowledge his size. He was not intimidated by the size of his enemy. He was pleased and comfortable of the size of his God. And when he saw Goliath, he thought to himself, my goodness, if I can hit a lion this big, how can I miss a giant? It's actually easier to tackle a giant because you can't miss him. He can't hide. He will stand out. But when the stone sank into the forehead of Goliath, God's best plan for David came to the fore. When Gideon and his army was in battle, they had a plan. They had their swords, their shields. And the Lord says, leave your shields, leave your swords, take a, a jar, a clay jar and light. And your voices. And when they have defeated the Midianites by raising their voice, not their swords, by raising the voice and shun the lights and break the clay jars. God's best plan came into action. The moment we rely on God, His best plans will come into fulfillment for our lives. I will not be able to finish this morning. Even if I continue next week, that's fine. As long as we believe God's plan is the best plan. We don't need to have we don't need to understand the plan. We might not even know what's happening tomorrow or this afternoon. The only thing we need to know is that God has a plan. And not a faulty plan, not a failure, but a plan to bless us and to, and to elevate us. God's plan is different than man's plans. Man's plans are birthed in our minds. God's plans are birthed in the heavens. It's too big to comprehend. It's too vast to embrace with our mindset. It is like an ant that wants to understand the conceptualization of life. Try to reason out creation. His mind is too small. If we must take ourselves and look at ourselves just from space we aren't even a speck on the earth but yet we want to explain and, and, and understand the creator of the universe we are merely dust 
upon this earth in comparison to the greatness of God. Sometimes we trust earthly stuff, man-made stuff more than we trust God. I've not seen one of you this morning that tasted the chair before you sat down. You haven't even asked a second opinion of somebody else. Is this chair too safe to sit on? Yet we sit on something that man has created and we cannot trust the Lord that has created everything. And when God speaks, we want a second opinion. Especially if we ask of us to do something that we cannot understand. Can you imagine when God said to Gideon, Gideon, you're 32,000 men. There are too many. See, God, just wait. I just want to ask another prophet. <laughs> Let me just get another opinion. And when 22,000 left, I think he said to himself, I have heard wrong. I remember two, three years ago when we started the building project in Haman's Kral. No church. No church building. The tent is gone. The poles are gone. It sounds like a country in Western, a, a country song. Tent is gone and walls are gone. The and wife and the children left. The horse is gone. And we, we, the church grew from about 150 on a Sunday to less than 50 on a Sunday. So the tent is gone, the building is gone, people are gone, and they God, are we, are, are we hearing accurately? And then you start to doubt who you are. Then you start to doubt God's plan for your life. This is the time when deep calls upon deep. When you need to dig in what you have been investing in your life. But the sad thing is, so many Christians never invest in their own lives spiritually. They are waiting for an impartation on a Sunday. And sometimes during the week at home groups. But we are supposed to invest in our own lives on a daily basis. God's plan is different from man's plan. Let us not be concerned about the day of tomorrow. We cannot change tomorrow. We can only change today. By changing our life today, it shall inf uh, uh, impact and change my mo tomorrow. But if Christ is not the center of my decision-making process, my tomorrow will be a mess again. Gideon's plan to march into the battlefield with 32,000 soldiers. God had another plan. Gideon says, give me 32,000, I've got 32,000, let us go to war. And God says, no, give me 300. This is the time that you're wondering, Lord, did I really hurt you well? God's plan usually don't make sense. I know there will be theologians that will crucify me for this thought. Not all God's plans can be understood in our human mind. When the Lord said to us, Oh, how many years that was that ago? In 99, 98. When the Lord said to me and my wife that I must leave my job, secure income, medical aid, pension, house allowance, car allowance, leave everything and follow me. It doesn't make sense. We haven't met our budget since that day. But every month the Lord carries us through. All these years. 
God's plan will always be financed by God. Man's plans are financed by man. How many times do we pray for God's provision for my stuff? David was just a shepherd, but God saw King. Job, a wealthy man, man, he has made himself, he was a success, a righteous man, but God saw something different in Job. Joseph and Mary, young couple, they were dreaming about getting married. How she planned a wedding, I assume. Wedding dress, veil and everything. And the next moment she was pregnant. I do not know how I as a parent would have embraced the message if my daughter came to me and said, Daddy, I'm pregnant and I have not been with a man. <laughs> the Lord must really speak to you. God had another plan. Saul had a plan to destroy Christians. And he became poor. The test of truly, a truly consecrated life. And I'm closing with this. The test of a son of God is the willingness to walk in obedience. And obedience is not tested by the things you want to do. Obedience are tested, is tested by the things you don't want to do. And still do it without complaining. Without saying, I'm doing it on the outside, but on the inside, I'm not doing it. It's like asking your children, go and do the dishes. They do the dishes, but on the inside, they want to break every dish and buy Paper towels and paper plates and plastic knives and forks. So you can just throw it away afterwards. Obedience is the attitude in the heart, not in the action necessarily. Because if you change in your attitude, your outside shall follow your mindset. Luke twenty two forty two. Father. If it's your will, take this cup away from me. Jesus praying. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Even when his plan contradicts our plan. Remember, God's plan is different from my plan. Remember, God's plan is always the best plan for my life. And I want to pray for you this morning. Just, just pray with me. Father... I come to you this morning. I want to surrender all our man-made plans. All our ideas. Lord, sometimes we feel like Gideon. With all these wonderful things planned out. All the manpower, the weapons and the shields and the swords. And now you say, get rid of all the stuff and follow me. Thank you, God, that when everything seems impossible, everything is still possible with you. We celebrate your plan for our lives. Help us, Lord, to see your plan beyond our plans. Lord, I want to say thank you for somehow clearing our agendas this year. So that you can have the pre prominent place in our lives. Yes. Help us God in this morning. To crown you the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords of our lives. Yes. And Lord we acknowledge today. That you have a plan for our lives. Oh, yes. From right across the globe Lord. Every one of us has been, have been created with a purpose and a plan. Even if the parents didn't even want 
want you. You have a plan for every individual. Lord, even it's, it might seem impossible, everything is possible. Yeah. As we surrender unto you. Thank you for this morning, Lord. Help us that we shall become relaxed. Take peace in your presence. That we shall believe and embrace your plans for our lives. Lord, even, even if it doesn't make sense, we fully rely upon you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go and enjoy this day. Amen.